ever thought about what if you knew tonight you were having your last supper? <clears throat> what would you have to eat? Would you want a home cooked meal? I want to go to Marianne Kellogg's house. <laughs> dinner at one of your favorite restaurants? Would it matter to you if you ate on good china or paper plates? Would it be a candle, quiet candlelit atmosphere or a backyard barbecue? Now I don't mean to sound morbid, but uh, what would be important to us if today we knew we were planning our last supper? I think the question most of us would give the greatest consideration in planning our Last Supper would be this. With whom will we eat? Amen. And what will it be? Amen. Whenever we have the advanced knowledge of something being the last time we will ever do this thing or be a part of this event, it radically changes our perspective. End times and last times and final chapters have a way of stripping us of all of our pretense and cutting to the core of what is most important. The problem comes, though, in the fact that often we don't know when the last time will be. And we all live with the subtle illusion that there will always be a next time. Now, none of us want to walk around with a dark cloud of impending doom hanging over our heads. Why, if we did that, uh, we probably would have to go somewhere that they would protect us from ourselves. But at the same time, Jesus seems to warn us from getting lost in the inane. Do you know that word inane, I-N-A-N-E? It means empty. Insubstantial, lacking significance, meaning, or a point. Silly. Jesus tells us story after story to draw us out of our preoccupation with the inane and to get our minds on things that truly matter and our hearts stirred by issues that are eternal. Be ready, Jesus says. Now, Throughout much of my life, growing up, I heard preachers warn of being ready for Jesus to part the clouds. For the rapture was coming, and if you hadn't walked the aisle, well, you'd be left behind. For a tribulation that would end you up in an eternal lake of fire. But over the years, as I've read the words of Jesus, often presented in parables, there there's nothing really I've found about walking an aisle or nothing about making any religious declarations or any statements of faith, but there is a whole lot about living one's life with significance. Over and again, Jesus tells stories about a kingdom of God that grows from the inside out. In other words, Jesus hammers away at his disciples about putting their faith into action turning their belief into their behavior, translating, translating their love into their life decisions. Jesus very pointedly says to us, your heart will always be where your treasure is. Sadly, we often spend our lives with our treasures in the wrong places. And we don't realize it until we're faced with the last summer, a terminal diagnosis, a tragic loss of a loved one. Jesus calls us to wake up. Wake up. Be alert. Be ready. For if we are not ready, what will happen is the very blessings of life all around us will pass us by or will pass them by. If we're not careful, life will sneak by us, and one day we'll realize that what we thought we should treasure was not really where our heart wanted to be all along. 
the author Nadine Stair wrote these words in the face of a life limiting illness. She said, she said, if I had, if I could live my life over, if I had to live my life over again, I would dare to make more mistakes next time. Okay. I'd relax. I'd limber up a little bit. I'd be a little bit sillier than I've been on this trip. I would take fewer things seriously. I would take more chances. I would take more trips. Climb a mountain when I could. Swim more rivers. I'd eat more ice cream and less beans. <laughs> but now I like beans. I like beans. I would have more actual troubles and few imaginary ones. You see, she said, I'm one of those people who live seriously and sanely, hour after hour, day after day. But oh, I've had my moments, I've had my moments, and if I had to do it all over again, I'd have a lot more. In fact, I try to have nothing else but moments, one after another. Instead of living so many years ahead of each day, she said, you know, I've been one of those persons who never goes anywhere without a thermometer, a hot water bottle, a raincoat, and a parachute. <laughs> and if I had to do it again, I'd travel lighter. If I had my life to live over, she said, I would start barefoot earlier in the spring and stay barefoot way later in the fall. I would go to more dances. I would ride more merry-go-rounds. I would pick more daisies. Her words to me echo the words of Jesus as he calls us to things significant. Jesus himself expressed what is truly significant in the act of sharing a meal with his closest friends. A meal that he knew would be his last supper, his very last one. He took the common elements of a typical first century Palestinian Jewish dinner, bread and wine, and with those common things, he gave to those who loved him, both those who loved him then and those of us who love him now. He gave us all himself. <coughs> he made an enduring and eternal statement about what truly matters. So, what will we do for our last supper? Will we share it with those whom we love? Will we give ourselves away by doing things eternal, meaningful, memorable, and loving? Jesus uses his last supper as a symbol of the life he gives to us all. A life in which he shares freely with us. God's unconditional love. A meal through which he says to us over and again the words of Rod's song. I love you. I love you. I love you. And he calls us. This is what it's all about. And he must get so frustrated when he sees us making it about something else. Yeah. This is what it's all about. He calls us to embody his way of life by sharing with those around us the bread of life and the cup of forgiveness. Let's pray. God, as we enter this holy time, sacred time, this time in which we are reminded through 
a meal you shared with your closest friends now more than 2,000 years ago, we are reminded what it's all about. It's all about love. Our accepting your love for us and our sharing your love with the world around us. And so today, deliver us from all the inane, all that meaningless banter that we do with each other and that the world does and gets echoed so loudly through our various means of media. Let us set all that aside and get back to what it's truly all about. And that is loving you with our whole heart, mind, and spirit. And loving each other as you have loved us. <coughs> Thank you.